dear students from today we are going to start the lecture series for the subject dynamics of machinery in the first lecture we will discuss about introduction to mechanical vibrations what are the contents and outcomes of the subject in, in the first is what is vibrations vibrations in our lives what are the causes of vibrations basic terms which are used in the vibrations types of vibrations vibrating systems and how to calculate the natural frequency of the single degree free undamped vibration outcome of this lecture would be the student should be able to know about the vibration its causes and elimination methods how this vibration is involved in our day to life day to day life and whether it is useful or not that we will come to know we will understand the basic terms which are used in the vibrations different types of vibrations and the vibrating systems and mathematical modeling of a simple spring mass system to determine its natural frequency so what is vibration any motion that repeats itself after an equal interval, interval of time is called as vibration or we also call it as a oscillation if you see look at this simple pendulum if you hold this simple pendulum and take it to the other side and release it will start oscillating like this so this simple motion which repeats itself after equal interval after interval of time is called as vibration and there are the another examples are rotation of the wheel rotating shaft etc so here if you can see these are the different uh, terms or different things where the vibration you might have been ob observed suppose this is a compressor for the digging of the roads for the testing purposes ultrasonic cleaning and if you see all these are having the useful effects of the vibration at the same time there are harmful effects of the vibrations are also taking place and necessarily vibration creates noise there is a destruction wearing of the parts and it leads to the fatigue failure how this vibration is in our lives our heart beats the vibration of a heart is nothing but the that that beating of our uh, heart is nothing but the vibration our lungs are oscillating our ear drums are vibrating and because of that we can hear in night time we are snoring that is also one type of vibration our systematic oscillation of the legs the light gives permit us to see sound gives allows us to hear and the beautiful music uh, created in the instrument is nothing but the example of the vibration what are the causes of the vibration by vibration takes place the first is imbalance if you know the rotating equipments axis their axis shaft must be equally balanced if there is some imbalance is created which leads to the centrifugal force and that is one of the reason for the vibration misalignments so the misalignment of the rotating shafts creates a vibration and generally the thermal expansion is a big factor for the misalignment external forces which are applied on the system are also the examples of the uh, causes of the vibrations we are when the components becomes worn excessively and because of that there might be some imbalance created and that leads to the vibrations and it generally happens in case of bearings and gears loose connections if the two parts are not properly connected that also leads to the uh, vibrations resonance you know when the frequency of the external force will matches with the frequency of the system natural frequency of the system which leads to the vibration which leads to the resonance and when the resonance takes place there is a maximum displacement or amplitude takes place and vibration is created earthquake is an example wind are all are nothing but the causes of the vibration so here we will see how this vibration would be reduced or eliminated we cannot eliminate the vibration 100% but we are trying to reduce it so removing this what are the causes of vibrations then if there is a much much noise here we can put some screens for the objection 
so testing the machinery on the proper type of isolators use of shock absorbers and many more way we can reduce the vibrations so before study of this vibration it is very useful for us very important for us to uh, know the what are the different terms which are used in the vibrations we have seen already the vibration there is another definition of the vibration is given a particular rigid body having to and fro motion about the mean position is called as vibration time period you know i am taken to complete the one cycle frequency is nothing but the number of cycles per unit time amplitude is nothing but the maximum displacement of a vibrating body from its equilibrium position degrees of freedom we you know studied in previous semester about the degrees of freedom the number of independent coordinate systems required to specify the specify a motion free vibrations vibration of a system because of its own elastic properties and no external force is required for this vibration but only some initial force is required for the vibration of the body so in short we can say that the vibration in absence of external force is called as free vibration force vibration when the system vibrates under the external force in that type of vibration is called as force vibration now when there is a vibration we are trying to reduce to that vibration so we are providing some resistance to that vibrations and that resistance provided to the vibration is called as damping natural frequency this is very important term in the vibration so the simplest definition is the frequency of free vibration of a system is called as natural frequency and it is a constant for a system it is its inherent property and it depend upon elastic properties mass and stiffness of the system resonance we have already seen nothing but the when the frequency of external force matches with the natural frequency of the system then we can say that the condition of resonance occurs periodic motion a motion repeat itself after an equal interval of time it is very important to know that it is a equal intervals of time and here you can see the graphical representation of x versus t plot for the periodic motion harmonic motion this is the this is a graphical representation the motion of a body to and fro about a fixed point is we call it as a simple harmonic motion the phase difference here you can see there are the two waves the angle between these two or the lag between these two is nothing but the phase difference and is represented by an angle called as phase angle the different types of systems that we are going to study in the vibrations are before that we should know what is the mechanical systems the systems consisting of mass stiffness and damping are known as mechanical systems the first is discrete system or lumped system the type of systems having mass stiffness and damping these three components separately visualized that type of system is called as discrete system take the example of a suspension system which is used in the railway bogies you you might have seen there are the suspension springs that you can see so the spring is visible the mass of the bogie is visible so and the there were again if you can see the suspension systems which are used in the bike and car where you can clearly visualize clearly distinguish there is a mass there is a stiffness and damper such a type of systems are called as discrete or lumped systems discrete distributed or continuous systems where you cannot visualize these three elements there is a continuous see the best example is of a simply supported beam aeroplane beams so here you cannot distinguish stiffness mass and damping these type of systems are called as distributed or continuous systems free and forced vibration we have discussed earlier linear and non non linear vibrations in a vibratory system spring mass and damper behave in a linear manner that type of vibrations are called as linear vibrations and all the linear vibrations are governed by linear differential equations and the law of 
superposition. At the contrary, another type of systems are called as nonlinear web systems. Damp and undamped vibration we have seen. What is meaning of damping? The damping resistance provided to the vibration is called as damping. And if the damper or damping is provided in the system, that type of system is called as damp system. And if there is no damping, then that is called as undamped system, undamped vibration. Deterministic and random vibrations. If in the vibratory system, amount of external excitation is known in magnitude, it causes a deterministic vibration. We take an example of the fan. When the fan starts vibration, we know what is the input provided to that vibration. So we are able to determine the amplitude amount or amount of vibration. So that type of systems are called as deterministic system. And non-deterministic vibrations are called as random vibrations. A car moving on a bumpy road surface or earthquake, these all are the random vibrations. Transient vibrations. The amplitude of vibration decays or decreases continuously because of presence of damping and it ultimately vanishes. This type of vibrations generally taking place in real systems is called as transient vibration. There are another three modes of vibration, longitudinal vibration, transient vibration and torsional vibration. So if take an example of this simple spring, hold this mass and pull it downward and release, you will find that this spring is oscillating in vertical direction and the axis, this axis is called as the longitudinal axis. So the vibration which takes place along the longitudinal direction is called as longitudinal vibration. The Another axis which is perpendicular to the longitudinal vibration, longitudinal axis is called as transverse axis and the vibration takes place along that transverse axis is called as transverse vibration. The simple pendulum, the cantilever beam are the examples of a transverse vibration. In the third case, torsional vibration, you can see there is a one rotor attached at the end of the shaft. You simply hold that, that rotor and twist it and release. So there is a twisting and untwisting moment motion of that shaft or that rotor will take place and that type of vibration is called as torsional vibrations. What are the basic elements of a vibrating system? So mass, spring and damper are the three basic elements of the vibrating system. So you can see here this is a simple spring mass system where spring is there, damper is there and the mass is attached. So spring you can see here we are going to study the only linear vibration. So spring which is used is a linear spring. What is the meaning of this linear spring? If you will apply some force on the spring, there is a uniform displacement of that uh, spring will take place. And if you will plot it on the f per surface plot, it will give the slope and that we call it as a stiffness. And the force which is exerted by the spring is called as the spring force and is calculated by a into x. Similarly, the another component which is a damper, again we call it as a linear damper and the force exerted by that damper is we call it as a damping force. Uh, here this is a simple example of the damper is given when the force is applied at that time this piston will start moving in the downward direction and the fluid is trying to move out with from this through these holes and where the drag the damping force will be acted. So, so damping force per unit velocity is called as a damping coefficient. So C is a damping coefficient and the damping force is calculated by C into x dot x dot and the mass you can see this is the inertia force, this is the acceleration and the inertia force is given by the equation mx double dot, x double dot is the acceleration. So here uh, the pictorically it is shown, so this is the displacement given to the spring by applying the spring force. The velocity is this is nothing but the damper, so that coefficient is C and acceleration is nothing but inertia force. So force spring force is K into D, now here it is X, F is C, F damping force is equal to C into V and acceleration, inertia force is mass into acceleration and all the mechanical systems are modeled having the three components spring, damper and mass and when these components are subjected to the constant force they react with a constant 
and that are displacement, velocity and acceleration. So now we will study the different types of vibrations. So starting with the single degree free undamped vibration. So this is our first case where, where we are going to find out the equation of motion as well as the natural frequency of the given system. Here in our study, we are only focusing on the single degree linear systems. Okay. So, it is a first case is free undamped vibration. So, no damping is provided. The whole system is undamped. So, how to calculate the equation of motion of the given system? There are three methods. One is called as equilibrium method. Second is energy method. And third is the Rayless method. So, starting with the equilibrium method. So, that is nothing but the for the longitudinal vibrations. So, consider to, to calculate the equation of motion for the given system, we will consider the simple spring mass system. And this simple spring mass system is nothing but the representation of all the physical systems available. So, the mass of that physical system is represented by M and the stiffness of the material of the physical system is represented by K. Here no damping is provided, so C is absent. So this is the first spring where there is a no mass is attached. So this is a K. We have attached some mass M and because of the mass the weight is acting in the downward direction. So it is get by deflected some amount that we call it as a static deflection and the spring is resisting its motion in the downward direction by spring force or that is also called as restoring force which is given by k into delta. So we will hold this mass and pull it in the downward direction so we applied some acceleration to it and again that time the displacement is x. So here we are representing the displacement is by x. The rate of change of displacement with respect to time is x dot that is velocity and double displacement is acceleration. So we will represent now the velocity by x dot and acceleration by x double dot. And if you see here the free body diagram where the inertia force is acting as n x double dot, the weight of the mass is acting in the downward direction is w and the total spring force is k x plus delta. But if you see this figure b, when the mass is attached, the weight which is acting in the downward direction w is equal and opposite to that of the k delta. So, this k delta and m is w are get nullified. So, here it is only kx and it is in the downward direction is mx double dot. So, according to the Newton's law of motion, we know that the summation of the forces should be equal to inertia force. Sometimes the DLMR principle is also used. So, what is the difference between when we use the Newton's law and when we use the uh, DLMR principle? So, DLMR principle is for the rigid bodies and the Newton's law is for the particles. So, that is here the external force acting is minus kx and the inertia force is mx double dot. So, the direction of this spring force is opposite to that of the inertia, that of the acceleration that is why taken as a negative. So, equating these two, so we have got the equation of motion for the single degree free undamped vibration is mx double dot plus kx equal to 0. So, again simplifying this equation, so x double dot plus k upon m x equal to 0 and this term k upon m is called as square of omega n and this omega n is calculated as under root of k upon m at the per seconds and this term is called as natural frequency of free vibrations. So, we have got the equation for the natural frequency of free vibration omega n is equal to k upon m where k is called as stiffness of the spring in Newton per meter, m is mass of the system in kilograms and therefore we have got the natural frequency in that input seconds. But we know there is another relation for uh, natural frequency. So, omega n is equal to 2 pi fn where fn is the frequency measured in hertz. So, time period we know this reciprocal of frequency. So, we have got the equation for the time period as 2 pi upon the root of n by k. Now, we will find out the solution of this equation mx double dot plus k x equal to 0. So, this is the second order linear differential equation. You have studied in the previous semesters and 
just to find out the solution of this equation, we are assuming that x c x is equal to a e raised to s t. This is the assumption, and from this assumption, we have got the generalized solution as x t is x is the function of the t a sine omega t plus t cos omega t, where a and b are arbitrary constants, and that 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 constants can be found on the initial conditions. So, what are that initial conditions? We'll refer this graph. This is the x of t versus time. Here you can see when the time t is equal to zero, there is a some initial displacement which is x zero. Okay. So here the first condition is that t is equal to zero, x zero is equal to x o. That is the x zero. That is the initial condition. And at that time, you can see that t is equal to zero. It has zero velocity. So x dot is zero. So when you apply this first boundary condition, initial condition to the equation one, we'll get it that that b is equal to x zero, and we'll differentiate in this equation one with respect to time. So you will get a omega cos omega t minus b omega cos i omega t, and applying the second initial condition to the equation two, we'll get a equal to zero, and substituting this values of a and b in equation one, we'll get the basic equation as x of t is equal to x zero cos omega m t. So if we referring to this figure, so here it is the cos wave, and x zero is the initial amplitude. There is a second way of calculating the um, equation of motion is energy method. So what is the energy method? You know that energy is neither trans, neither created nor trans, not um, destroyed, but we can simply transfer it from one form to another form. So here, in case of uh, free vibration, energy is not transferred from system to system, and the total energy is given by kinetic energy and potential energy. So we know the kinetic energy half m d square. M d is we are representing here by the x dot, and potential energy in case of springs is nothing but the energy stored by the spring, and that is the strain energy. So when we apply some force on the spring. It has certain displacement. At that time, the energy stored in the spring is nothing but the area under the curve, and this area under the curve we can calculate by the simple equation one by two f into x is a triangle area of the triangle. So where f is the spring force given by k x, and if we substitute in this equation, we get potential energy is equal to one by two k into x square. So substituting in this equation one. We will get u is equal to half m x dot square plus half k x square. So differentiating this equation with respect to time and equating to zero, again we will come to the solution of m x double dot plus k x equal to zero, and this is the equation of motion of free undamped vibration, where the natural frequency omega n is equal to under root of k by m. So there is a one more method that is. Uh, Energy method, uh, Rayleigh's method. So you try your at your home, your own to calculate the equation of motion for the method. Thanks.